when I think about finishing records, I think that's about, that's like the last, for lack of a better number, just, uh, that's like the last 30% or that's the last third of mixing, be- uh, mixing of, uh, of finishing. Cause yeah, I think yeah. fi- finishing, I, when I think of finishing records, I think of the part after the songwriting it's, it's, which is sort of just like producing a record. But these days there's very few songs that are like, People sit down, they write the lyrics and the melody and the chords, and then they go yeah. record it and produce it. So much of production happens during the songwriting process. All at once. That, that then after the process where you're writing the song, and by the way, finishing can be part, you can finish a record on day one, it's rare, but those sort of things can yeah. happen. Things can be yeah. spontaneous, everything is just, just lands in the right way and you're done. Um, but I think of finishing as you have a production that makes sense with the song, the song is written, okay, how do you get from there, which is a, either a really good song demo or a pretty complete idea to, we're ready to put this out. Uh, and yeah. that includes mixing. I think I would say that includes mastering. We can, we can get into that. But it also includes a step or two before that, which is, you know, maybe you need to edit it and there's no first post chorus. Maybe it's, um, you need to add another couple layers of background vocals, even though you thought you were done, you need some extra oomph in the chorus and it requires recording more. I think yeah. h- people are very curious, how do you make something sound finished or professional or, or just done? When, when do you know that you're done? And the reason why we can take so long, we could probably talk about this for multiple hours, is yeah. that like so many things that are important in this process, there isn't really one good answer a lot of it comes down to experience. A lot of it is trial and error. Yep. Um, a lot of it is, you know, hearing two guys like us talk about it and even disagree about what the heck we're talking about in order to get to some place where we're both thinking about things in a slightly new way or, you know, uh, new ways to approach things. I think the yeah. idea of finishing a record is uh, is something that you said I- I- in there, which I, I think is maybe the fundamental is we're not talking about the song. We're not, we are talking about the mix sometimes, but we're also talking about the arc of the song, the topography. Yeah. Topography is a great word. You know, topography, the, the, way a, the way a landscape looks, how many peaks and valleys and, you know, how dense this part is and it's up high, but it's clean. So uh, yeah. the, the topography it's the, it's of the, the art. It's the art of mapping. It's the art of mapping a terrain. And in, in, in most music, it, it's, if there's a city, it's like Utah, there's like a the uh, Salt Lake City, you get off, you, you land in Salt Lake City and there's mountains all behind this like little city involved. Like the song is in this big giant world and inside of that world, there's another little world of all these different parts. It's like, that's why it's hard to just say it's a landscape. There's more, it's rigid. There are these points, especially in, in a four to eight bar um, loop pop popular music. It's like, some things just stop, right? You know, you listen to a Michael Jackson record, you could hear Bruce Swedean like fade out a thing and Quincy like, oh, let's let's bring that let's bring that shaker up now. And it's like it doesn't just come in and enter. Like the shaker starts to come in. I mean, and there is a bit of that angularity in 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 those records too, but there's more of these like nuanced fades. The music that we're making right now doesn't really call for that. And I was aware of that like a good decade ago. So I've been trying to master the art of transitions in blocked music. So I think of that topographically because there there is uphill mountains, but there's also just like boom, boom, skyscraper, like hits you in the middle. You're like, wait a second, where did that come from? So to me, it's a little more visual than just saying, oh, like the peaks and valleys of a record. Like there's some hard lines. Absolutely. And I, I, you mentioned Michael Jackson. I think I said it on a previous stream, but I, I heard this story. I don't know if it's true or not. It could be apocryphal, but I think it's a great example of how to think about this stuff. That apparently when Michael Jackson was adding a vocal or doing a tweak on the bridge or something every time he would make an adjustment on the mix on a vocal on something he would listen to the song from the beginning every because, time because whatever you're doing at the end of the bridge transitioning to the last chorus it actually matters what has happened for the two minutes before that so yes. thinking of songs if you're thinking about finishing a record you're thinking of it as topography as arc yes. what yes. uh w- what is this function with respect to the rest of the song with respect to the vocal with respect to the performance and something that you said there which i really like and i want to hone in on is so much of record making today is loops like you said eight bar loops yeah. people 
you know, copying and pasting things. It's a way you make records quickly. It's great. It, you know, used to be that you'd actually have people playing all the way through pre-computers. You actually yeah. have to, like, with the exception of some tape loops and cutting, like you Play have a, dr down. a drummer playing a, a whole performance. And even if you're splicing between performances, it's still an arc of a performance. And a lot of records are missing that these days. Uh, the, the records that don't sound finished often suffer from things being very blocky. Um, yeah. I, I've definitely been brought in on records before when um, you know you get a production and like the verse feels a certain way and the pre feels a certain way and the chorus mm -hmm. feels a certain way and they feel different. There are three yeah. different things happening. But, we should we should add a quick distinction in yeah. there that sicko mode doesn't count in this conversation. Those are different songs. Yeah, and 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 like I know people are going to think about that. Like, yes, it can work, but it's Drake and it's Travis Scott and it's two records put together as one. Like, we're not talking about that. We're talking about an arrangement. The song is in the same key. The tempo doesn't change, and it's to maximize its possibility of success at, at, at in popular music radio, whatever. Yeah, and that's the the other thing to I'll, I'll finish my thought in a second. But the other thing to think about <clears throat> is that even in the last five years music arrangements and what is considered proper changes has changed dramatically. It used to be mm -hmm. if your song was like two minutes long, people were like, that's way too short. But that's only just, since like the seventies. Cause then if you go back to the Beatles, like rubber soul yeah. or one of those first albums, almost all the songs are under three minutes. I think they're all yeah. like between two twenty and two forty. And so then Lil pump comes back and uh, other yeah. records like that a few years ago where songs are like a minute 58 with an yeah, intro. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mixed um, a 207 the other day and I was like, where's the bridge? Oh, I guess so, it doesn't need a bridge. So thinking about these things in terms of what are the rules for how records are supposed to be is not, I think, worth getting into. It's actually worth understanding that records can kind of happen in any kind of way. And Sickle Mode's a great example where it just works. And in, yeah. if you listen to that song as an arc, it doesn't make sense in a pop conventional format, but it just feels right. If yeah. there's enough momentum and there's an intro and it hits hard enough and then it gives you this drastic change and it feels a bit more like a DJ set or a cut in a exactly. music video or something like that, but it's still an arrangement and it still functions really well. And whether they thought about we're going to make this calculated decision or they just did it and they were just like, oh shit, there's a lot yeah. of great arrangement stuff that happens that way where you're just experimenting, you listen from the top and you just go, fuck, this really makes sense. Getting so, back to what I was saying a second ago, real quick, just that yeah. a, a lot of people are making very blocky music and one of the ways to make things feel finished and like there's an arc is to put either program it in or actually make real performances happen between sections and transitions. Like you said, these sort of yeah. things become extra, extra important um, because there's, you know, you're not playing in a drum track down for three minutes. You've got the same drums. The kick drum is the same velocity, the snare drum. Maybe you're switching up some samples here and there, also another technique, but you got to yeah. think about these things in terms of, what's happening over the whole two, three, four minutes. Um, yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of finishing records is about making the whole thing start to finish feel good. And one of the things I will say, and I was just working on actually finishing a record last night, um, I was kind of, uh, is, is an artist that I haven't, uh, I've worked on a couple of songs with that nothing's come out yet. And so I was listening to some of their other stuff and realizing that there's, there's a lot more nuance the, the music appeared really, really simple is like a lot of the songs were like a guitar, some drums, uh, a few vocals, uh, maybe a little bass part. And that's about it. An 808. Yeah. But it turns out when you dig in, there's the intro, the guitar is here. And then the second half of the intro, the guitars widen out. And then yeah. there's a subtle bass part. But when it goes into pre-chorus, it's filtered slightly differently. And then when yeah. it comes into the chorus, it opens up a little more not adding parts, not doing anything besides just subtle changes. And the vocal yep. has a little more reverb. There's a little more of a double. So it doesn't sound yeah. more dense, but it gives you just a little bit more of the breathing room. So it doesn't sound loopy. And that's a yep. thing that a lot of songs have these days. Like, you know, my tendency, I, I really came up in that like late, late, uh, late aughts, early tens, teens era when, you know, it's like Max Martin, Swedish, super, there's lots of dense things happening associate finished records with a lot of that really dense production that's that everything is perfectly placed so it um so it feels big and it feels complete but a lot of records now what the arc of the arrangement is yes did i lose you there oh you're still there i can't see the video um 
So anyway, right. yeah. you, were, you, were gonna, you had some response to that. Yeah, that's how I that's how I see the position. That's how I see the role of finisher is making sure all of that is possible. Um, and in that that uh, example you just gave, who knows who did that? Yeah. You know, I've gotten a version of of that exact song that you're talking about um, that has the guitar and the bass, and it's only that, and it doesn't have any of those moves. And then I make those moves. Yeah to make it feel more like a growing record and there's a journey, right? So sometimes it's already there for me and I don't have to do as much, but sometimes it is. So that's why it's the answer is always sometimes, but that's, that's what, that's what I'm kind of trying to drill down to is that the role changes all the time. Um, and the real, the real role is, does this sound like something worth listening to? Um, which is another whole thing. I just makes the whole, album um oh i should actually just stop right there never mind um <laughs> that sounds good i i i think that the the key thing for a lot of people who are thinking about finishing records is it is actually extremely challenging to be the person that is doing the it's the hemingway quote uh, right drunk at it sober it's very yeah. hard to be the same person in the same state both being creatively free and throwing out random ideas that may not work because when you're being creative, even in production, I assume even in mixing sometimes, but much more in the sort of songwriting production part, you need to be trying things that you're not sure if they're going to work or not. That's where interesting things come from. When you get out of the realm of comfort and assurance and certainty, that's where really cool, interesting shit comes from. And it's yeah. very hard to be in that part of your brain and then also be in the part of what are the little refinements I need to make this finish? I know I, I can't do that very well. I very much need to like, and this is maybe one of the pieces of advice, I take serious breaks sometimes for days yeah. but between, between working on a record and being, doing the creative output and then editing and getting things in more of a finishing mode. It's very hard to do both of those things. And I think for the most part, people really need to get their brain into the mode of, you sort of step back and you go, do I like this? Am I, am I bored 90 seconds into it? Why? Okay. Then you go, why am I bored? Okay. I'm kind of tired of this sound. Let's go into it. But yeah, you could just be tired. 